It's been an incredibly challenging project. This is definitely an issue that needs to be addressed. It's probably kept me up more nights than I would like to admit, and it's caused me so much stress and anxiety. Canada is in the middle of a housing crisis and I'm looking to help alleviate that crisis one property at a time. Follow me for all the ups and downs of being a real estate developer in today's market. From small scale developments all the way up to multifamily apartment buildings, this is The Development Diaries. Uh, this project has been incredibly challenging, probably the most challenging project I've ever worked on as a developer. And the reason for that is we hired a general contractor on what's called a fixed price contract, meaning we would give them a certain amount of dollars to complete the project. Ideally, there are no overages uh, beyond that. So if the contractor can perform that work under budget, they get to keep the remaining money. If the contractor goes over budget, then you know that's not something that I have to be out of pocket for. The challenge with this project is the deposit structure was one that had heavily weighted deposits at the front of the project. So a 10% deposit to get the contract started, which is typical in this, in this field. And then there was a 30% deposit for materials. And at the time, you know, a year and a half ago, materials were a little scarce. Glass was scarce, steel was expensive, wood was expensive. So it wasn't abnormal for a contractor to ask for a material deposit, which then they would go and purchase those materials, have them sitting there and they would be ready to use. The challenge with our contractor, and I'm okay to share their name because they are a horrible person and they should you should never work with them or if you come across them, just run away. Viceroy Holmes was our contractor on this project. And they essentially took that money, they took that 10% and they took that 30% and they basically ran away with it. They took that money and they left. Uh, they did a little bit of work and then they basically dropped this project at the point where it was a big hole in the ground and they just walked away. And so as the developer, it was then my job to come in and try to fix and get this project back online. But there was no way to recover that money. And we have gone through the legal process now. We've sued Viceroy Homes. Uh, we've actually won our lawsuit, but we now have to have the challenge of trying to collect on that money, which is a whole other thing. But the project itself is not valuable in any kind of way unless you can finish it. And so it was my job as the developer and uh, you know, working with my investors essentially to say, okay, how do we get this project back on track? And how do we get this project ultimately finished, generating income and on a more long-term stabilized loan? So at the point that I was basically, uh, the contractor walked off the site, we engaged a construction management company and the construction management company specialized in projects that had been, uh, had challenges or had been abandoned or had any kinds of issues. And so they came in and we worked together to A, remove that contractor legally to make sure that we weren't going to have any issues down the road and then basically pick up the contract. I became the general contractor, if you will, or my corporation became the general contractor. The construction manager started working with the various trades and getting things costed. And then we also basically started construction again after about a three or four month period where nothing happened on this project. And so as you can imagine that money being gone and, and then having to take those sort of financial hits and keep moving, there was a lot of things that needed to happen. And one of them was that essentially I had to inject a whole bunch of my own money into the project to make, to keep it going and to make it happen. And so that's where the project is now. There's still our investors, uh, you know, their money is involved, my money is involved. Uh, the bank will come in and finance a certain portion of this, but ultimately we have to get this project done. We have to get it built. We have to get it stabilized. We have to get rental income coming in on it. And then we'll just have to wait for the market to do what the market usually does in Toronto in order to be able to recoup all that capital. So that's where this project is right now. It's been an incredibly challenging project. It's probably, kept me up more nights than I would like to admit, and it's caused me so much stress and anxiety, but ultimately it doesn't help to kind of bury your head and, and walk away. We would, if we walked away, we would have lost everything. And so the only thing to really do is kind of pick up, keep going every single day, figure out a way to make it happen. And that's what we've done on this project. The 
The guys are here today to start to connect the sewer and the water to the house. So the city contractor brought the sewer and water to the property line and now our contractors that we've hired are gonna bring it from the city side to what we call the private side that's gonna be inside the house. So we have some good news. We dug down and we found that the uh, original line is in really good shape and it's a six inch pipe and it's basically then a straight shot from where we wanna to connect to into the house. And so what they're gonna do now is they're going to shore up the dirt, they're gonna dig down, they're gonna crack the old pipe out, they're gonna connect the new pipe and then they're gonna give us the right amount of pitch and bring it inside the building. What we're concerned about right now is if we have enough pitch that we don't have to do a sewage ejector pump in the basement. We won't really know that until we get everything exposed, until we can see a straight line and get a level and figure out where we're gonna line up inside the building. But so far, it's looking like we may not need a sewage ejector pump, which is a huge savings, and it's also a huge hassle that we've been able to avoid. But we don't know the exact answer yet. So the sewer line has been punched through the foundation wall and we now know exactly how high or how low the line is going to be. We were hoping to have nine foot ceilings in the basement like we do everywhere else. Uh, the challenge is now we have to make a decision. Do we install sewage ejector pumps in the basement which would allow us to keep that nine foot ceilings throughout in the basement or do we bring the whole floor up because right now we don't have enough pitch to get to the back bathroom without bringing the floor up to around eight feet. So eight feet for a basement is still reasonable, but you know, nine feet is just that much better, that much nicer. Um, there's also other things we need to take into consideration. Does that affect the windows? If, they're, if the floor comes up another foot from where we were expecting it, the floor, the windows have already been manufactured. You know, do we have to redo those as well? So now I need to make a decision on, you know, whether we do a sewage ejector pump and um, keep everything as is down here, or do we raise the floor up, which would allow us to have natural flow from all the sewage lines. So this is a big decision. Um, it's going to affect quite a bit of other things in the house. I got to check with the architects to make sure the stairs are still going to work. So. There's a lot of things we have to decide on um, in the next little while based on where this is coming through the foundation wall. Constructicon is your go-to specialist for framing, carpentry, fences, and decks across the greater Toronto area. Jerry and his team of professionals are committed to turning your vision into a sturdy, lasting reality. Whether it's framing out a laneway suite, an eight-unit apartment building, or a simple fence or deck, Constructicon's expertise lies in creating structures that last. Their attention to detail, efficiency and reliability, and their communication and collaboration is what sets them apart. Elevate your space with Constructicon's unmatched craftsmanship. Contact Jerry today and book your free, no obligation consultation. I hope you are enjoying the development diaries. There's a lot of energy that goes into this video and this series and my entire YouTube channel. As you can imagine, there's a lot of costs that go into that as well. There's a full-time videographer, a video editor, an entire team working in the background to put out content every single week. How you can support me and my channel is you could be a sponsor of an episode or this entire series. And in turn, I will promote you on my YouTube channel and in all my social media content. So if you're interested in a sponsorship opportunity, whether that's your business, 
or you're an individual and you want to promote your business, feel free to reach out to me at info at Darren Boros and we can set up a call and talk a little bit more about sponsorship on this channel. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy the rest of the video. So we decided to go with the sewage ejector pumps in the basement. And the reason why I decided to do that is it was the lesser of two evils, if you will. The option was to bring the floor up by a foot and gravity feed everything in the basement or install a sewage ejector pump and leave the basement ceiling height at nine feet. If we went to eight feet in the basement, it would have been a lot of reworking of uh, the stairs, the window openings, everything. And so installing the sewage ejector pump was the less expensive option. I don't love sewage ejector pumps because they are mechanical and they need maintenance, but in this case we didn't have a lot of choice. And so that was the decision that was made. We're going to do a sewage ejector pump. That's going to pick up all of the basement fixtures. Everything from the first floor and up will be gravity fed. So that is standard plumbing practice. And that will all basically pick up on the main sewer line and head out to the city side from there. So. It was uh, a bit of a tough decision, but I think it's the right one for the project and basically to keep things moving on time, on budget, everything else. We're getting closer to having power in the building. Last week, Toronto Hydro was here and they put in a brand new hydro pole. That's just for our property here. And what they're gonna do with that hydro pole is they're gonna actually put a transformer on it and then they're going to connect our 400 amp service. When you run 400 amp service in the city of Toronto now, you have to run it underground. So they're gonna take that line, run it down the pole, they've excavated out front, they're gonna drop it about 24 inches below the surface. They're gonna protect it in concrete and they're gonna leave it at the property line. From there, our electricians will pick it up on the private side and they'll run it into the building and then we'll be able to connect all of our electrical panels and our entire distribution network in the house and we'll have power in the building. Rodrigo, do they have a, do they have a tape measure? Yeah. So we have to be 40 inches below the soil, below the level of the, uh, Right, because the sidewalk is going to go like this, all the way down. And 40 there, correct. Okay. Hello, hello. Lo más derecho que puedas. Okay, que quede bien derecha. Right behind me, we have started running our trench from the hydro pool to the house so that we can now get our 400 amp service into the building. So in order to be able to do that, we have to trench from where the, uh, where the utility company left their section of the pipe. We have to trench over to the property and then core into the building so that we can install this 400 amp service and get our electrical happening at this site. There are some things we have to do in order to make this trench to code. We have to go down a certain depth. We have to make it a certain width. They're actually gonna drop a conduit pipe and the, and the wire will go inside of the conduit pipe. And then they're going to pour concrete over that conduit pipe so that nothing can damage it. So all of that stuff has to happen. Then we have to do an inspection. Then we can backfill and then they'll actually pull the line from the hydro pole all the way into the house and connect our electricity. La tierra este, echa la aquí hacia la casa, Polvo. Ajá. Lo más que puedas para que no tengas que estar Say, in English, teamwork makes the dream work. Oh. You understand? Yeah. No, you don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Darwin. You just say, Dad. We're trying to figure out exactly where we want to come into the building with our hydro service. I'm trying to drill through the foundation wall and try to line up in the basement exactly where we want it to come in. The challenge with this foundation wall is it's full of rebar. And if we hit the rebar with the drill bit, it's gonna be a problem. It's not gonna go through. So I'm gonna drill a pilot hole, see if we're in the right location first in the basement. And then once we figure out if we're in the right location, then we'll drill the bigger hole and see if we can get through.
cut that. I mean, uh, Sawzall will cut it, cut it here, right? Yeah. We've got a bit of an issue now because we drilled partway through the foundation wall and we hit a piece of rebar, which is what I was hoping to avoid with where we drilled into the foundation wall. So now we have to figure out a way around this rebar. We've got to essentially cut it so that we can move it out of the way so that we can keep that hole being drilled all the way through so that we can run our conduit to bring our electrical line in. So I'm going to have to take some sort of sawzall or some sort of grinder, cut that piece of rebar out, uh, get the hole all the way through in a nice clean straight line, and then we should be good to go. After our battle with the one piece of rebar, we have prevailed and we were able to cut out the piece of rebar and core from the outside all the way inside. Now we can run the hydro duct line with no interference and we can continue on with our installation of our 400 amp service and that hydro line. The electricians are here today running the hydro duct for the 400 amp service. So we dug the trench and now they're here laying the pipe. The pipe has been brought into the house and once they're done laying this pipe, we'll have an inspection done by Toronto Hydro. Everything should be good to pass and then we'll backfill this with concrete and then put the dirt back in the hole and then we can tie up the side of this, of the property here by putting down the sidewalks and doing all that. So uh, they're basically gonna run this pipe today, connect it all and then they'll come in and feed the wires through after the fact. We need to cut this down more. I'll take care of that. Okay. Toronto Hydro and the ESA, which is the Electrical Safety Authority, were just here and they passed our brand new trench for our 400 amp service. So now we can bring in concrete, which we will do tomorrow morning. We will cover this entire pipe with about four to six inches of concrete on all sides. Then we're gonna backfill. They want us to backfill one foot above the concrete, lay in the um, warning tape so that if someone was digging here and they found this trench that they would get a warning about a foot before they actually hit a bunch of concrete, which is before they would hit the actual pipe. So that's the next steps here. Once we've got that all done, we can backfill this and then we're essentially ready to pull the line from the hydro pool all the way into the house and get our electricity rolling. Uh, Remember you know? also too, this floor is coming up one foot. One foot? Yeah. Only this part or the whole? The whole floor is coming up one foot. Okay. So I It'll be higher. Yeah. The electricians are here today also working on the utility room in the basement. The utility room in the basement will essentially be dedicated entirely to electrical for this building. So they'll have the main feed coming in. There'll be a main disconnect, which will then go to the splitter and the splitter will then power up the eight units. We'll have eight meter bases here, eight disconnects for the eight apartments. And then we'll also in this room have a house panel, which will run everything that's just dedicated for the house. There'll also be a meter for the house panel. And then we'll also add another meter for the future garden suite, which is gonna go in the back. So this entire room will be dedicated for the electricians. And we basically have two other utility rooms on the second and third floor, which is really good because we can dedicate those to the hot water tanks and for all of the data and internet cables that are happening inside of this building. What about the internet stuff? Internet's all on the third floor. Okay, yeah. nothing here, right? No. Okay. This is the all for the electricians. The, it's the electrician's room. Yeah. <laughs> we are here today pouring concrete and digging out this trench because a lot of times when you deal with electrical contractors or even plumbing contractors, what's excluded from their scope of work is actually trenching. So digging these trenches that all of their lines need to run in. And so that's why I have a crew of guys that work for me. Uh, they're basically here to do general labor. This is a perfect opportunity to do something like this. I don't have to hire an external crew. I can have my crew come in. 
we dig the trench, we fill it with concrete, and it cuts down on our costs significantly versus having a third party do that work for us. So that's why we're here today, trenching and pouring concrete with our crew and our labor in order to expedite this process and do it at a less expensive cost. Our concrete is now poured over top of our conduit that will feed our electrical from the electrical pole. And then we'll continue to backfill until we're at grade. So this is now ready to complete the backfill and then we're on to the next part of our project. I love it when a plan comes together. As you can see, the trench for the hydro is complete. We have poured cement over the pipe. We are ready for hydro to come in and pull their lines from the pool all the way into the house, and then we can connect to our new 400 amp service. The electricians are done and they are ready for inspection. So I'll do my best to explain what's going on here. Right here, you'll see that this line is the one that we did from the exterior. It's all the way to the city, uh, to Toronto Hydro's line at the pole. So when the wire is ready, they're gonna pull it all the way through here and then it's gonna connect it right here. This is the main disconnect. Um, so this is going to basically disconnect or connect all the power to the house. So the main line would come in here, it's gonna feed these. When this is connected, it's obviously gonna power up everything else, but you could have a main disconnect here, which would shut off the entire house. From here, this goes into the splitter. The splitter is basically like any splitter that you would have in your house for cable or anything like that. It basically takes the power and it shifts it all to these eight disconnects, which then feed the eight meters, which then feed the eight panels into the eight units. So. This is the splitter, these are the disconnects, this is the meter base, this is where we'll have our meters, and then these all feed the electrical panel. So you can see there's six on this wall, the seventh and the eighth. This here is the main disconnect for the house panel. So the house panel has its own meter, and the reason why it's bigger is it's a bigger service. This is 200 amp versus these I believe are 60 amp. So we've got a main disconnect, a meter base for the house panel, and then this is the house panel that will service all of the hot water tanks, the emergency lighting, uh, anything that we pay for as the landlords will be on this panel here. So that's the electrical room. This is essentially a room dedicated to the electricians so they can run all their stuff. Um, and this will feed the entire building for our 400 amp service.